What's up, New Hope family? Welcome to New Hope here. Welcome to the lobby. My name is David. I'm our online campus director, and I sound like this today. You do. And I apologize. We love it. Uh, but this is what you get today. That's why people are filling in for me in host moments later, but you'll see that in a little bit. If you're uh, newer to New Hope here or you don't normally join us this early in the service, this is the lobby. It's just where we hang out before the service like you would if you were at a physical church in the lobby. Yeah, but you're just forced but if someone, to hang out with us. If someone sounded like this, though, you might stay away from them <laughs> in the lobby. Good like, thing you're yeah. not in person. It's not COVID, probably. <laughs> but with me today uh, is my friend Olivia. Hi, oh. friend Olivia. Yeah. Friend Michael is on producer cam. Hello, everyone. Hi, friend Michael. You guys might have to carry a little more of the conversation yeah. today than normal because, again, this is what I sound like. If if a, a stranger came up to you in a mm -hmm. church lobby and sounded like this, I was like, hello, yeah. welcome to New Hope. I'm so glad that you're here. And they were like close talking. I'd go to the bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is the second time we was it, was it Olivia the last time yeah. too? Yeah. Okay. If you're ever around Olivia <laughs> and she says she has to go to the bathroom, she's clearly just trying to get away. <laughs> I, think what we've learned. I also drink lots of coffee on Sunday morning, so I could actually have That's to go fair. to the bathroom. So we'll never know. Yeah, never know. But I'm going to be very self-conscious about it now. <laughs> yeah, don't worry. Sunday. Yep. Has she ever ditched you in that manner on a Sunday, she Michael? Probably. Who knows? <laughs> what would you do if you? We're welcome I'm, to church by this uh, place. I'm a pretty forgiving person. I would just assume they smoke a lot or... Thank you. <laughs> pretty forgiving. I don't know. I had a cold like two weeks ago, and then I went to a, a team camp with my team. We played nine games. Shout out like to the team. Two and a half days. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Sorry. Yep. A shout out to the team. But yeah, like after the after the first game, I was like... This isn't going to be good. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the next game was the next morning. And I had like a little bit of a voice. And and then it, it was it was completely toast. I, I coached like this. Wow. Come on, guys. You need to play harder. <laughs> it's really hard to motivate. It was really effective. In right? a whisper. Yeah. You guys we did not play well? very well. <laughs> we had a couple games where we played awesome. But yeah, it was, it was, it was not my favorite. Mm -hmm. So it's on its way back now. But this is where we're at. That's not my favorite. It's my favorite. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy it. It's kind of funny. I was thinking when it went away, I was like, what if it never comes back? Like, I w didn't actually think that was going to happen, but just like, imagine living a long, long time ago, you know, before we knew like normal medical knowledge that we have these days. Yeah. And you're just like in a cave somewhere and your voice goes away and you're just like, I guess I can't speak anymore. Like, that'd like, be terrifying. This is gone forever. Yeah. That would be scary. That'd be rough. I've never thought like that before. Well, welcome to my brain. <laughs> <laughs> and now Olivia's going to worry about it constantly. <laughs> no, we have WebMD. We're good. Oh, okay. <laughs> Olivia, do not go on WebMD. <laughs> so fine. We keep Olivia off of WebMD. I've diagnosed myself with a few types of cancer in the last <laughs> few years. Oh, Web, WebMD <laughs> always brings you to the worst. You're like, oh, I think like my fingernail hurts. And it's like, oh, I'm going to die in 14 minutes. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's mm -hmm. terrible news. Seven days. I don't, I don't know if anyone has ever like, become accurately diagnosed from WebMD. Mm. I'm yeah. also wondering if <laughs> Michael's camera... Type in the camera, chat. Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you I, don't know, I don't know if Michael's camera is recording. Oh. Olivia, can you go check that? I don't think it is. It's definitely not. I was, I was going to ask before we started... Like, hey, but I was, I just, today, like I said, I assume the best of people. Right. And that's good. Don't assume the best We're just going to roll with right that. Now. If to you're wondering why you haven't seen Mike, <laughs> hey, everybody, here's Michael. Oh, hey. Can we get raucous applause for Michael, please? Oh, raucous applause. It's for not Michael. engaged. Hey, I figured it's done. There we go. Thank there you. Go. Yeah. Now, can we get Hattie's version of raucous? Actually, I should probably do it with my Yeah, current. it would. <laughs> <laughs> that's so accurate. That was spot on. That's literally what she said. Maybe like. every time she's tried to do that, she just was losing her voice. Who Maybe. Knows? Yeah. I don't think so. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm uh, so sorry you haven't seen Michael. That was my fault. It is sad to not see Michael, mm -hmm. for sure. I'm fine with it. I like seeing It's Michael. cool. Maybe yeah. I won't even cut <laughs> He's just going to not edit himself <laughs> in for the whole episode. It's non existent the entire time. <laughs> so, uh, Olivia, mm. before we started recording, you and I both partook yeah. in breakfast sandwiches. We did. And uh, what type of sandwich did we both have? They were sausage yeah. breakfast sandwiches. Which is the correct answer. Michael, would you agree? Yeah, oh yeah. Because yeah. mm -hmm. so, then Michael went on like a mini rant about 
those who would choose a different meat in their breakfast. It's just one you. question. Like, why would you eat any other type right. of breakfast sandwich? And I, right. If you had to pick a second, like if, if again, we were going to live in a devastating world where they ran out of sausage, mm -hmm. what would your second meat choice be in a breakfast wow. sandwich? That's what I would like to know. And I want to hear from you too. So jump in the chat. Or if you're joining us after the fact, jump in the comments and let um. us know what type of breakfast sandwich you would choose. In fact, we want to know your first choice. For all of us, right? It's, sauce, it's yeah. sausage. It's sausage. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It probably, your first choice should probably be <laughs> right. sausage. We still too. love you if it's not, but just know that you're wrong. <laughs> yeah. I would, I would definitely do bacon second. That's mine too. And I, but I, I, I probably ham, wouldn't so. get ham. Yeah, that's where I'm at too. I just wouldn't eat it. I would just probably skip breakfast oh. if there wasn't sausage. I'm just kidding. I go, for, I go for bacon for sure, but I'm with you guys. If ham is an option, like just take the meat off and I'll just eat the egg and cheese. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I probably wouldn't, like, unless I just, I was like, okay, I need a meal right now. Mm -hmm. Even if it was bacon, I probably wouldn't. Yeah, I would do, I would just be like, I'm not getting one. Mm -hmm. Right. Interesting. But I don't eat breakfast most days. So okay. if I do, it's usually like for some, you know, something special, like a sausage breakfast. Like a breakfast sausage sandwich. breakfast sandwich. <laughs> we had to share it together. Do you have a favorite place to get a sausage breakfast sandwich from? Mm. The McMuffins, sausage McMuffins at oh, with, with the egg or without the without the egg. The yeah. egg ruins it. I don't know I why, yeah, but it does. Oh, it's like just not egg. good. I don't. I wouldn't say it ruins it. I just think it's not as good. Mm. Like I would sure. I'll, if you get me a sausage egg and cheese McMuffin, I will eat it. Yeah. Right. But I'll also be like, you could have saved like a buck eighty and just right. got me the sausage one, and I would have mm -hmm. liked it more. Sure. I actually like growing up, like really liked the sausage McGriddle. At that's McDonald's. the correct answer. That's because my answer. That's just like it's so I mean. Good. It's just a sandwich and so I do this. So I do the sausage McGriddle, add cheese because they don't put the cheese on the plain sausage McGriddle. If you do the one with egg, they put cheese on it. Oh. Okay. So you got to pay the extra whatever. It I is. do the one with the egg normally, so I'm gonna have to try it without the egg. Yeah, try it without the egg. I don't egg. think I've next. ever had a McGriddle. At I know. So we're gonna Bold stop words. recording now <laughs> and actually bring <laughs> the cameras with late. us and go to. We gotta get Michael. On the, we gotta get Michael on the grill. That's my fault though, because I've. I don't know, probably five-ish times, gotten each of us a couple of breakfast sandwiches at work one day. But I know you love the sausage McMuffin, and it's cheaper. I so I'm like, it's the one he loves, and I can spend less money. That's yep. the one I'm gonna get. Automatically blames himself for. But I feel like I should have. Many years I, have it had. I feel, at least for the last like two and a half, it's my fault. Okay. I feel like I should have provided. We do blame you, David, yeah. for this. That's Before that, it's just been that. my frugality. Oh. Sure. Is that a word, frugality? Uh, that is a word. Okay, just making sure. I'm I not do making have another question, though. My frugalness. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question? Another question in regards to breakfast sandwich, since okay. we're just really going into this conversation. I like deep dives on breakfast <laughs> sandwiches. <laughs> uh, but if you guys had the choice between a breakfast sandwich and a breakfast burrito, what would it be? Well, if we're at like McDonald's, it's a sandwich. Yep. Like I don't want their sure. weird like fast food breakfast burrito. But if we're going to like Three Amigos mm -hmm. in yeah. town, who has like the best breakfast burritos in all the land? I'm going burrito every sure, time. Sure, yeah. yeah. Okay. Same. I would definitely go for the. Well, see, it's actually up until this year I didn't partake in consuming burritos because um, they really stressed me out, and they still do. <laughs> <laughs> but nowadays, I feel a lot more confident in my burrito intake. And, um, <laughs> and I would say burrito. Okay. At this current time in my life. <laughs> Michael? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to eat really good. that good, though. It's true. I, I, uh, I don't have a good answer uh, like Olivia does. <laughs> I think it also depends on where I'm at, right. for sure. Yeah. Yep. I do like a good breakfast burrito, though. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were talking about the Chick-fil-A breakfast burrito, which is super <gasps> good. Anything in Chick-fil-A. They have like, this like, jalapeno salsa that's mm. so good you put on it. I normally, though, I'm not going to lie, I don't get the burrito and I get the chicken minis. And mm. I, I, at at Chick-fil-A? I eat the chicken nugget. Yeah, Chick-fil-A. I eat the chicken nuggets with Polynesian sauce. It's a go-to. If you don't use Polynesian sauce, um, you don't go to Chick-fil-A. And then I eat <laughs> so opinionated the today. bread with <clears throat> the separate. chicken nuggets in separate. Interesting. Interesting. And dip it in Polynesian as well. And it is so if good. If you use the same dipping sauce, why don't you just eat it all together? <laughs> because I like it separate. It's, the bread is just like one The bread is mine. ridiculous on those, yeah. Do you think anyone has ever sat in front of a flannel graph and discussed breakfast sandwiches as much as we have? We made no. it. I think we just set a world record. I think <laughs> we, we need to call Guinness. It's all recorded, too. <laughs> the longest conversation about breakfast sausages sitting in front of 
a large flannel graph. And now we're going to go into church service really hungry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I hope wherever you're joining us, you're able to get a breakfast sandwich or whatever you have for breakfast. Make sure you let us know in the in the chat. Yeah. Your favorite breakfast sandwich. If not, hold on. Or burrito on. versus breakfast sandwich. Either yeah. Way. Either way. Yeah. Um, and make, make sure that you jump in the chat because we want to uh, talk with you. We know that so many of you reach out and you say um, either, either have sent emails or in the comments or in, if we see you in person and you say, we love the lobby because it, it lets us kind of get to know who you are and connect with you. And we're so happy for that. That's why we do this. We also feel the same way about you when you fill out a connect card or you jump in the chat. So make sure you jump in the chat or fill out a connect card because we want to connect with you the same way that we hope that you're able to connect with us. We love you, New Hope family. Uh, thank you, Michael, for producing. Thanks, Olivia, for hanging out. Yeah, sorry, I forgot to hit record. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> And cut to Michael's camera. It's working. Uh, thanks to all of you for listening to how terrible my voice is right now. It's been really annoying. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we love you, New Hope family. And we have such an awesome service today. Pastor Wes is teaching. He's going to be teaching the next three weeks. So it's mm -hmm. going to be really great. We will see you in just a minute. What's up, New Hope family? We're so happy that you've joined us today. We've got a great service plan. We're in week two of our summer series, Flannel Graph, Stories Jesus Told, and Pastor Wes has a great message for us today. Yes, but before we get to that, we have some time of worship, so let's worship together.
What is up, New Hope fam? What a great time of worship together. We would love to connect with each of you, and the best way to do that would be if you fill out that connect card. You can go ahead and click the link in the chat, fill out any praises, prayer requests. We pray over you yes, as a do. team every week, um, and we also have a prayer team that lifts you up in prayers. There's also a great place on the connect card for you guys to get involved. So go ahead and check out the connect card and click the link in the chat. Yes. Uh, we have a service that's for your children. It's called New Hope Here Kids. It's a great time of worship and teaching, and then Pastor Andrew actually starts it off by uh, just uh, talking about the theme of the day and she has a verse to share to you so uh, we encourage you to check that out it's for your children grab a second device click the link that's in the chat right now hand that to them and then they can focus on the service that's for them and then you get to focus on the service that's for you and now is the time to give back to God his tithes and our offerings and the easiest way to do that would be to click the link in the chat um, if you are newer to New Hope just feel free to take a pass on this we want to uh, just give the service to you as a gift and for those who do give faithfully we would just like to say thank you um, it allows us to move our mission forward here at New Hope yeah let's, church let's take some time to pray together God, you are so good, and we thank you for this time that we get to we get to worship together in your name. And we just ask that you be with each and every one of us in wherever we're, we're worshiping from today, and uh, just speak to us and um, yeah, teach us something new today about you and and who you are. And we we just pray for Pastor West and the message that he has to bring to us, and just be with him as he delivers the message and and help it to um, just change our lives. God, uh, we're so thankful for you and for all you do for us. We pray this in your son Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I uh, am really excited to be with you today. If you don't know who I am, I'm Wes. I uh, serve as the district superintendent for the region that includes uh, your church. And I get to do today what is like my favorite thing to do, and, and, and that is to teach God's Word. And, and I want to look with you in Luke chapter 16, the first eight verses of Luke chapter 16, at a story that is rarely taught because it can be misunderstood very easily and confusing, certainly, but it, it comes it's pretty fresh for me because it comes out of what God is doing like in my life in these days, both in personal ways, relationships, family, but also in, in leading an organization and those kinds of things. And so what I shared with you today will really come out of some of my personal journey. Uh, and I, I hope and believe, I, I trust that God's going to use this story that Jesus told to maybe be a really important step in your transformation. I think if you give me the next 15 or 20 minutes, you'll find that God may start speaking to you and this may be a week in which some things are different for you. But before we get to all that, uh, we're going to read Luke chapter 16, uh, verses 1 through 8. And just go through it together, and I'm going to stop and explain a little bit about what it is this story means. The first verse starts this way. It says, Jesus told his disciples, people like us, he's talking to sort of fearing God, Christ-following people. It says, there was a rich man whose manager was accused of wasting his possessions. So he called him in and asked him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your management, because you cannot be manager any longer. The manager said to himself, what shall I do now? My master is taking away my job. I'm not, I'm not strong enough to dig, and I'm, I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I'll do. I know what I'll do so that when I lose my job here, people will welcome me into their houses. So... He called each one of his master's debtors. He asked the first, how much do you owe my master? 900 gallons of olive oil, he replied. The manager told him, take your bill, sit down, do, do this quickly, sit down quickly and make it, make it 450, make it 450. Then he asked the second, how much do you owe? A thousand bushels of wheat, he replied. He told him, take your bill, 
and make it, make it 800. Make it 800. And now verse 8. Interesting. The master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. And in this last sentence uh, of verse 8, says, Jesus says this, and this would have been enormously offensive. I'll explain this in just a second. He says, for the people of this world are more shrewd in dealing with their own kind than are the people of the light. What, well, people of the light. Like, so he's saying, you, me, God fearing, church going, you know, us, we're worse at this than the in rebellion from God, really lost, godless folks. He says, we especially, you and I, we aren't good at this. And that, if you're like me, is just a touch offensive. <laughs> and the people who first heard the story, they were offended, got angry. It was, okay, but before we get too far down that road, let's go back and just walk through the story to make sure, sometimes when you, when you hear Jesus tell a story and he you know, bushels of wheat, like we don't pay off bushels of wheat often, right? But still, let's walk back through the story. So here you have uh, a rich, it says a rich man or, or the owner. You, you, you have the owner of a large agribusiness of some kind. And he discovers that his manager has been wasting, the connotation here is even intentionally, like fraudulently wasting resources of the business. So he calls him in and he says, you're fired. Bad. You're fired. Poor job, stealing, whatever. You're fired. You've got 24 hours, 18 hours. We don't know exactly the number of hours, but you've got like a day to get the books together, to bring them in, turn everything over, you know, the keys to your desk. I want, you know, the whole, that's the, con that's the idea, right? If in our day it'd say, I want your laptop password and your, your code, you know, whatever. You've got all this. Gather it, bring it in. So in the process, though, the guy takes uh, and does some behind-the-scenes, deceptive, cheating kinds of things so that, like, the, dead, the people that owe the business will be his buddies and maybe hire him afterwards and the surprising part, really too surprising, but the surprising part is the, the owner calls him in at the appointed time, 18 hours later or whatever, and says, nice, well done. That was shrewd. Because we read this, we hear this, and we think, because usually the owner represents God, the rich, like, like, and he does in this case. And so you don't expect that. Well, again, let's get back to that in a moment. Hold on to that. Why in the world? So let's walk through this story and maybe discover together, or I will suggest at least what I believe Jesus is commending. And once we've determined what Jesus is commending, let's ask ourselves, you and I, how do we do in this area? Because let's keep in mind the offensive part. The offensive part is we don't do this very well. People far from God in rebellion from God do this better than we do, Jesus says. So what's he commending here? Because we know, right, if, you, if, you've been, if you're familiar with Scripture at all, if you're familiar with God at all, we know lying and cheating he stands against. Right? We agree on that. Lying and cheating. So it can't be that. So let's walk through what this manager does and thereby, there, thereby understand what it is God's commending. And once we know that, let's review our lives. So I would suggest to you that this manager, yes, deceptive manager, but this manager does three things that Jesus is specifically saying we don't do well. And the first of those is he faces reality. So if you, if you just think through the story here. 
He's being fired. But what he does first is to say, I'm losing my job. What do I do? I, I can't dig. I'm not good at manual labor. I, I got a week back or whatever it is. I just, I'm not a manual laborer. I'm just not good at that. And then he says, I can't beg. And in our day, that would be, I'm not good at like persuading people. Like I can't do telemarketing. I can't sell stuff. I can't, I'm not good with people. Like and I, I, I'm too like, I'm just, I don't want to push myself on others. Like I, that's, I'm not going to be a salesman. I, I can't do that. And then after having faces, faced reality, he's ready to move on to the next step that Jesus commands. But before we get to that one, I want to ask you now, because let's stop and pause at each of these and, and take a moment. How do you do it facing reality? How do you do it facing reality? I have this area in the lower level of my home that is specifically designed to keep me fit. So I have a treadmill. Maybe you have an area somewhere, or maybe you go to a gym or whatever, but I have a treadmill. And then, then a couple years later, maybe multiple years after we decided we weren't using that enough, we bought a different one. So we've got an elliptical machine beside the treadmill, and there's a weight bench over there. And you, you, We've got this area. And then my wife... My wife made a really poor decision, in my opinion. Uh, she added another piece of equipment that I detest. Maybe you've got one of these. It's a little square thing, flat, sets on the ground. It's in this same area. When you step on it, it gives you information. You got one of these things? Yeah, I think you do. <laughs> I, 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 so, so here's what I'll do. I'll go into this area. I'll do a little bit of something or another. And I'll, you know, 10, 15 minutes in, I'll, I'll be, you know, potentially out of breath or whatever. And so I'll have a break. And I'll, I, I, should, I should see, you know. So I'll step on it. And, and there's usually a number that comes up 200 and none of your business. And, and uh, I kind of step off. Mine... The, the one she got is it's kind of a digital thing, and so there are sometimes where it needs some kind of recalibration or something. And so I think to myself, well, maybe that was that can't be right. There's, there's no way. So I'll step off, you know, I'll tap it a couple times, like sort of kick it a little ways, and okay, and I'll step back on, and it's always the same number. It's so frustrating, right? So frustrating. And so then I do. Do you do this kind of, so then I do this kind of, I think I drank a lot of water today, right? <laughs> you know, I never drink too much water, right? But this is what I'm saying. I think maybe I drank a lot of water or, or I've, I've missed a couple days of, you know, the elliptical or whatever. I, I have this sort of mental gymnastics I go through and, and the whole thing is to help me not face reality. I'm finding that the older I get, the better I'm getting at not facing reality. I'm getting like a, becoming like a professional at it. How are you? Do you have people in your life that you've specifically given permission to to help you face reality about things in your life? Or have you arranged your life with people who do a good job of not helping you face reality? Do you have ways in your life that it's just natural for you to face reality? Or have you arranged your life so that that information is not front and center? Relationally, I, you know, I don't know what God would want to do in your life, but... but Maybe it's with an addiction. Maybe it's in relationships. Maybe it's in your family. Maybe your walk with God, the way you handle finances. Like, like how are you? At, mm, yeah, I got to deal with that. That's the first thing that he does. And I'd like this week if you'd reflect on that. The second thing that he does is he forms a concrete action plan. 
Like he says, okay, I know what I'll do. And he forms a concrete plan of action. It's, he, he, he doesn't live in this moment of indecision that lasts a day or two or three or a month or six months. He says, here's what I'll do. He pauses. He reflects. We who are Christ followers know that that's a moment in which we should seek God's will. But, but, children of the light, followers of God, what we can get really good at is pausing for a long, long time. We sometimes say we're waiting for the Lord. I'll talk about this a couple of times today. We can, we can pause in indecision and we can use spiritual language to not make a decision. And Jesus says, this guy, he makes a decision. He forms a plan. Now, we'll later learn what his plan is. It's not, a, it's, it's not necessarily the plan Jesus would recommend, right? It's not about the plan, but he forms a plan, and he makes a decision. And then thirdly, he takes immediate action. So he faces reality. He makes a decision. He takes immediate action. He calls, he calls somebody and says, hey, what's your bill? Let's cut it. What's your bill? Let's cut it. What's yours? Let's cut it in half. Let's do it quick. Do it quick. We got we to get on this. I, you know, I got 12 hours. I got 18, whatever it was. I, I, we we got to take action. And again, Jesus says, that's not the way we operate in many cases. And here's, so, so, I live in the church world. Like, it's my job, it's my life, and it's, it's all part of what I do. So I kind of gotten to know how we who do this thing a lot operate. And it's so frequent for me to hear something like this. Yeah, uh, my marriage is really struggling. And... Uh, we're, we're waiting on God to give us some direction. Have you seen a counselor? What steps are you taking? No, we haven't, we haven't done that yet. We're just we're seeking God's will. We're asking for our community to be praying for us. Yeah, uh, I've, got this, I've got this health challenge in my life. And I'd really like it if you'd just be praying with me that, that, that God would help. Have you scheduled a doctor's appointment? Not yet. Not yet. And I can, I can get even more personal if you'd like. God's gotten that personal with me. Like, wait a minute. I, I lead a, a pretty complex organization these days. And it's so easy to live in indecision and in action because I'm quite sure I don't have all the information and it's quite difficult to make. And so it's so, and, and, and I'm a dad and I'm a husband and those things can be super complex. And I'll tell you, it's so much easier for me to say, you know, God, when you give me clear direction on that, I'll be ready to go. And usually direction comes with action. And Jesus says, don't use your spirituality, your relationship with God as a crutch. No, 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 no. Be wise, be brave, be bold, take steps. So now let's go back to the story for a moment. Because there's a... The, Again, the, this, this is surprising that the owner commends this dishonest servant. But think through, if you know anything about Jesus' time, this is what would have been happening. So the manager would have given all of these like rebates and discounts. They would have gone home to their families and their friends in this 
small community and said, you'll never believe what happened. We had this enormous debt, and it's just been cut, and families would have started to throw parties, and there'd be barbecues. It'd be like this community barbecue at the park where everybody's saying, did you hear what this, you know, this big company, this big, they just gave us this huge break, and now a debt has been lifted, and there would have been this huge, there would have been like, there would have been a lamb involved, and there would have been this whole celebration, right? And, 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 and it's at, as the celebration would have been going on that the manager came back into the owner. The manager's being fired for doing this kind of thing. The owner is on record of not liking the manager's actions. But the manager bet that the owner, seeing all the joy in the community, would not want to stop the party. Because the manager knew that the owner loved this community, loved these people. So he's betting everything that the owner is seeing the celebration and says, wow, I have plenty. I'll give grace. Let it ride. You're still fired, but let it ride. Let it ride. I remember when Jesus tells a parable it's, it's less and more. He says, if, if, if a dishonest manager could bet everything on the generosity of a rich owner, how much more can you and I bet everything on a God who's with us and has our back? You see, what I'm learning and what I hope you can learn with me is that it's not about the wisdom of of my plan. My strategy is not phenomenal. And I bet yours isn't always either, right? Maybe, maybe look at the person next to him and say, sometimes you don't make great choices. <laughs> Can we just admit that to one another? Like, me and you, we don't always have it figured out, right? And sometimes when I take action, my plan that wasn't great, I make it even worse because I kind of bumble the action. But I have a Savior and a Creator who says, walk, and I'll walk with you. Sit down with that counselor. Have that hard conversation. I got your back. You can bet everything on my presence in your life, Wes. Let's do this. Let's, let's face reality. Let's form a plan. Let's take immediate action. And I'll be with you. Bet on me. Bet on me. You see what I've learned the older I've got, the, 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 the more experience as a, as a dad, a husband, as a leader. That I've, the, the, the farther I go, the more I realize I don't have a ton of wisdom. Really, all I've got is a little bit of action and initiation and wisdom, and I've got God. But it turns out, that's enough. Turns out, he's willing to bless. Wow. Wow. So much fruit comes from not a wise plan, not great actions. But if I ask, make a decision, and stay connected to God, <laughs> when something doesn't work out, I reflect on it, and I just keep forward motion. And even stuff that in this world He doesn't plan for us, He works for our good. It's unbelievable, this walk with God. But the thing that gets in the way is when I step back, stop facing reality, wait on whatever it is I'm claiming I'm waiting on, and stop taking action until I know for sure. And then the fruit decreases in my life. So I want to pray. I want to, when, when I say pray, if, if you're new to the idea of prayer, it's, it's just, it's just it's, it's talking to the one who made us. 
And you have the option to do that along with me if you'd like. But I, I just, I want to talk to God about this. It's interesting. I, of course, this is the second service here, and I, I did the same teaching in first service. And even between services, God pointed out a very specific area in my life that, that I had been waiting to take action on. Waiting for God to give me clearer direction using my relationship with God as a crutch, if you will. And I should have just had the conversation. Should have just had the conversation and trust that God would give me the right words to say. What about you? Father, it is an incredible honor to actually speak with you today. To be in the presence of the one who made me, the one who sent his only begotten son, is the greatest honor you as a father could give to me today. And so I turn to my father, my heavenly father who is in heaven, who fills this very room with his presence. And Jesus, I'm told that when I talk, to the Father, you're praying along with me right now, so, so I know that you're right here on this stage praying with me, for me, for us, with us today. Oh, wow. And Spirit, I know you live within me, and you give me breath to breathe, but also words to speak, and so, and so, I'm honored. I... I accept today, and I'll continue to accept that I'm the child, I'm the servant in this relationship. I'm the lesser, and you, Father, are the greater. That's, that's okay. That's good. That's, that's actually freeing, because when I try to posture about being wise or, you know, smart or whatever, it you and I both know, Father, that's, that's actually not it. So I just accept being the child. You be the father. I will do my best today. We will do our best today to face the internal and external challenges and dysfunction in our lives and to form a plan and to immediately begin to take some action. We'll do that not because we think the plan is great or that we have such amazing skills that we can solve every problem. No, no, we've, most of us have lived long enough to learn when that's, that's actually not true. We will do that. We'll do that because of you. You are really, really, really smart. You are really, really powerful. And because of you, because you have our back, ah, there's no challenge we can't face. No challenge we can't face. No transformation in our lives that can't occur. Because you, you're really enough. You're really enough. Amen. Thank you. Hey, New Hope fam. We hope that this service was valuable for you today and that it encourages you to take a next step in your faith. Yeah, and a great next step that you could take today is by getting involved in the church. And one way to do that around here is by becoming a chat host. <laughs> and uh, chat hosts, they engage in the chat, they encourage conversation, uh, but also there's times when people ask for prayer and you get to pray for those people. Uh, if that's something that interests you, you can click the link in the chat. It'll take yes. you to our Connect card. Fill out the information and we will reach out to you later this week. Yes, and another... Next step that we talk about every week is the Grow Podcast. David and Pastor Leo are doing a Bible study through the Book of Romans. And so that will be coming out every Monday at 6 a.m. on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. So if that's something you want to check it out, check it out. Yeah. Well, thanks again, church, for joining us today. Uh, it's been a great day. We are excited about next week. Pastor Wes mm -hmm. will be back with the message. Uh, so until then, let's go and be the church.